In today's video, I thought it would be fun to share tips and tricks that I've received from you, my viewers. That's one of the things I love so much about making videos is the feedback I receive from you guys. It builds a great sense of community and I learn so much. So in no particular order, here are a few that I saw in the comments that I'm really excited to share with everyone. In my video about how to crochet faster, I got a lot of suggestions on different containers to hold the balls of yarn in place without it snagging. Large kitchen bowls, baseball caps, shoe boxes, backpacks were a few of the fun ideas, but the one that really stuck out to me was the suggestion of using a bulk size snack container. Now I have to say this works like a charm. I absolutely love it. I grabbed this one from my local Walmart and gave it a good wash and seriously the yarn just unwinds with ease. I really love this because it doesn't go anywhere, it just tumbles around and just unwinds beautifully. I use it on the table as you can see here, but this would be ideal sitting on the floor, near a chair, or even if you're working on your bed. And it made me think this would probably work really well with those tins that you get at Christmas time that hold the oversized popcorn. You know the ones I'm talking about. Another thing I really liked about this is that it has a top to it, so you can also use it as a storage container, so then you can take your project from room to room. Just love it, thank you so much. This video also sparked another conversation regarding yarn cakes. Now, in this video, I talk about how much I love them because of the center pull aspect, but many of you mentioned that it collapses on you and creates knots when you get towards the end of the cake, and I totally get that. So one viewer mentioned that she instead prefers to hand wind her yarn into a regular ball because it unravels easily and stays in place in her yarn bowl. So you're probably thinking, well, that's old school, but you know what? I gave it a go and I fell in love with it. It unwinds smoothly, doesn't tangle when you get close to the end, and works beautifully in a yarn bowl. To hand wind a ball is super easy to do. You just want to be very gentle with this because you don't want to ruin the integrity of your yarn. I like to start on my fingers just for a few wraps and then I remove it. And then I just start winding a few wraps at a time and then turning to a slight angle and then continuing on with that sequence. Just a few wraps, turn, few wraps, turn, continuing on like this until I create a ball. Again, just use a light touch with this. You know, the faster you go, the tighter you start getting. So just be really aware of keeping that flow. Now the downside of this is obviously that it's time consuming. So I would recommend this for your smaller skeins and scraps. A really happy compromise that I discovered through all of this was why not take your yarn cakes and instead of pulling from the center, just use it from the outside like you would a hand wound ball. You get the benefit and speed of a yarn winder, but if you use it from the outside, you get that really lovely smooth unwinding and not dealing with that cake collapsing. It's a win-win situation. Someone had asked in the comments how to keep their little tail in place so that ball doesn't come unraveled. I found a bobby pin works really great for this. But if you were to mention that she uses a hair clip that snaps into place, and I think that's a great idea. I highly recommend you give that a try too. My video about comparing the square knot to the granny knot gained a lot of views, but also a lot of controversy because I said the knot wouldn't come undone if it was clipped near the knot. Many of you let me know that it still comes undone if you're working with soft yarn. And yes, after making this video, I did another test and indeed with the softer yarn, it will try to come out. So thank you all for your feedback on that. And thank you also for the suggestion of simply leaving the tails on both sides and working over them as you crochet. That way you won't have to weave in those tails later or worry about that knot coming out. If you want to snip close to the knot, please do a test with your yarn first by pulling tightly on both ends, and then also trying to press your nail into the center of that knot to see if it comes undone. Now, if you don't want to deal with the tails with the square knot, then I would recommend going back to the fisherman's knot, the classic magic knot. I know I'll still have somebody say that comes out too, but in my personal experience for years of using the fisherman's knot, I've never had anything come undone, whether it's soft yarn, dry yarn, whatever. I'd also recommend that you watch this video on how to join yarn without a knot. I had many of you mention that you swear by the Russian join. So that video was actually a result of your feedback. So thank you for that. There are three different solutions in there that I think you're really going to like. In the video I did about how to deal with yarn ends popping out, there was a great little hack suggested. Simply take a yarn needle and pass it through the yarn, having that eye of the needle next to the yarn end that you want to fix. 
feed the end into the eye of the needle and pull that needle back through the yarn to tuck it into place. Perfect. In that same video, I had a few viewers mention how they like to split their yarn by separating the plies and then weaving those ends in opposite directions. This is a great one, especially if you're working with fine or lacy patterns where there isn't a lot of room to hide your yarn. It reduces that bulky look and obviously it makes it a lot more difficult for it to come undone. You can also add a little knot before you do that last pass by creating a loop with your yarn and then passing your needle through it. Then weave in one more time to secure everything in place. And here's one more regarding weaving in tails that a viewer suggested. She said that she washes and dries before snipping the weaved in tails completely, and it has really reduced that issue of the ends popping out. Love that. So just to recap, weave in your tails as you normally would, but don't cut them all the way back until after you've washed and dried your project. So you probably noticed that these are very simple and common sense, and that's the point here. Yes, these are methods that have been around for years and maybe nothing new for you, but here's the thing. We have new people joining the crochet community every day, and I think it's really important to keep sharing these fundamentals because maybe some of us didn't get that opportunity to learn from our grandmothers or have that 50 years of experience under our belt. It's just a reminder to all of us that it doesn't have to be a new gadget or technique to be valuable. I'm just so grateful for your comments and love hearing from each and every one of you. If you have any tips that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments. They're always fun to learn and maybe we can do another video like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.